And today I'm going to be looking at a USA migration case study and this first video is about the patterns of emigration and immigration and policies that have affected that. This is for the OCR Geography Spec and I've highlighted the section we're looking at here. So the USA is a famous uh, case study in terms of migration. Uh, you can see here the changes of the types of immigrants that have come to America since the mid 19th century. The most important thing to start off with is to talk about how the USA is a really influential country in driving uh, global migration patterns. Because it's such an attractive location, um, it often uh, drags in a lot of people from other countries and therefore it can alter changes in other countries. Some countries respond to changes, some countries drive change. The USA is a good example of a country that drives change. We can see here that it's got a long history of um, migration uh, and we can see here that the, the, the groups uh, have changed over time. Uh, people mainly from Germany and Ireland coming in the 19th century, but now the dominance is shifted towards Mexicans and a growing group of um, Asian uh, migrants. It's a very important host country, currently has 44.7 million immigrants living in the UK, uh, in the USA, sorry, uh, but that will change uh, over time. In terms of other important immigration patterns, the main contributors are uh, Mexicans, Chinese and Indians. 25%, uh, so Mexico is the dominant uh, source of immigrants and that's because there are very few intervening obstacles, it's very, very close. And um, we'll talk about China and India later. And there's some stats that are important. 25% Mexicans, 6% Chinese and Indians. Again, these will change with time. The other facts to kind of mention in terms of immigration, it's become an attractive destination. And we've seen rapid growth in the 21st century. Uh, there's changes in the policies since the 60s that have meant that more people have uh, come in. Uh, but it's started to slow in the last couple of years, it's about 13.6, 13.7% um, of the population of the USA is actually made up of uh, immigrants. It's a uh, country of net migration gain. That means there are more people entering the USA than are leaving it. And in terms of actual figures, in the five years up until 2020, 4.77 million people came in more than actually left. In terms of emigration, there's some similar patterns. Uh, most of the US citizens that leave go to Mexico, uh, Canada, UK and Australia. Canada, UK and Australia are, are obvious because of uh, their similar languages and economic opportunities. Mexico, simply because it's so close and there are over a million people who are US citizens living in Mexico, plus people that would have maybe returned uh, who have been born in the USA uh, of Mexican descent. I talked briefly about economic opportunities and high skilled workers are often leaving the US to go and work in IT and education jobs in places like the EU, Canada and the UK. Why these immigration patterns are allowed to happen is largely down to the migration policies. These are set out in the Immigration and Nationality Act. Uh, and this is the policy that determines who can legally enter the country. This doesn't account for people who enter illegally. They set a limit of 675,000 permanent immigrants that can legally enter the country each year. And that's uh, split up in different, different categories. In those categories, uh, the largest category is for visas for reunification of families. So 480,000 uh, highly skilled migrants. Obviously, they are valuable to the economy. And so the US government wants to get them in 140,000 of those. But they also uh, uh, give visas to protect refugees and uh, to promote diversity. So this is giving uh, visas to uh, people from countries that don't normally uh, migrate to the US. So lots of these will go to people from African countries where there are low uh, migration rates to the US. And the last group uh, is humanitarian relief. We obviously have natural disasters that happen and these are temporary visas that can vary each year given to people that are going through natural disasters uh, and, and things like kind of political crises that the USA is willing to support temporary. People obviously would have to then return at a later date once um, those visas are, have expired. Last thing to mention is immigration policy generally has stayed the same. It's often very positive for the USA. They are uh, a country that is taking in more people than is leaving but they can see temporary changes. So here back in 2017, 
Trump, uh, Trump gave a, a Muslim ban. It was it was um, nicknamed. It was where he stopped people from several countries from entering the U.S. and suspended refugee resettlement from Syria. This doesn't happen often, but it's good to know that different uh, organizations, Trump and Biden and Obama, would have had different policies on immigration that would have meant that those uh, uh, kind of limits on who can come in and who can't come in legally would have changed slightly over time. 